Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, today's uh, the 11th webinar in our series of talks on deep reinforcement learning. Uh, today's topic is uh, an important one. It's an introduction to uh, the actor critic algorithm, set of algorithms. Uh, it's a really important uh, topic because uh, today's deep reinforcement learning uh, often depends on, on this class of algorithms. Uh, most of the modern uh, uh, techniques rely on this, uh, this uh, algorithm. And so um, it's an important one to understand. And uh, we'll go through uh, a couple of uh, introductory uh, introductions to this uh, topic today. So with that, let's uh, pull up the slides. It looks like I'm having a problem right now with the slides. Let's see. Just a second. Okay, here we go. So, um, as I said, uh, tonight's uh, topic is introduction to deep reinforcement learning actor critic methods. The objectives this evening are, are to first uh, recognize some problems with the other two main uh, methods we've talked about in the past, the value-based methods and uh, policy-based methods. And then uh, to understand how these two different uh, independent methods can be combined into a single algorithm and thereby uh, reduce variance and improve uh, deep reinforcement learning. So um, here I start with a review of the basic value-based and policy-based methods. So we, we've been uh, talking about these different methods for a while. Uh, we started with value-based methods. Uh, if you recall, with the DeepQ uh, network, uh, the, if you have uh, done the first project, you probably relied on this method to implement the first uh, major project, uh, the navigation project. And the idea in this method is that uh, we train a neural network to learn a value function, and then we use that uh, value uh, function to um, map each state value action pair to a value and find uh, in whatever state we're in, we look at all the uh, different actions that are available, uh, the value functions that were estimated for each of those actions, and then choose the action with the largest value. Uh, fairly straightforward. Th this technique works really well when you have a finite action space, but if your action space is continuous, uh, it can be problematic. And uh, so we'll, we've uh, addressed a couple of uh, other methods that can uh, work in continuous action spaces, and we'll find today that uh, the actor critic methods that, that we'll talk about also work well in, in continuous action spaces. So as I mentioned, uh, deep Q networks and Q learning uh, is a is a good examples of the value based methods. Then the next uh, major uh, type of algorithm we talked about uh, recently are policy based methods. And the difference in a policy based methods from a value function approach is that we directly uh, estimate or optimize a policy. Uh, without using a value function. So the, the neural network that's doing the, the uh, uh, function approximation actually is, is uh, trying to find an optimal policy to select actions without first uh, evaluating uh, values of those actions. This, this approach uh, we saw was, was good uh, for a continuous action space or to a stochastic action space. So uh, there's a large class of algorithms that require uh, that type of approach. So policy-based methods can work well for that. Uh, type of, of, uh, of a problem domain. But uh, we, thought, we saw that uh, a, a real problem with these types of methods is finding a good function uh, to compute how good the policy is. And in, in these initial techniques, we use total rewards of the episode. It's a Monte Carlo technique. And the problem with that is that uh, it requires you to your agent to actually uh, traverse an entire episode uh, from beginning to end before you can make any learning before you can have any learning take place. So um, because you do an entire episode uh, from episode to episode, uh, actions that are taken you know at different points in the episode can have drastic changes in uh, the final results, and that results in high variance, and that high variance uh, produces uh, what can oftentimes be slow learning. An example of this algorithm uh, was reinforce uh, that we talked about a, a few, two or three weeks ago. So with that uh, review of, of those two uh, major classes of algorithms, let's talk now about actor-critic methods. 
So the, the real uh, idea is actually fairly simple. Um, in actor critic methods, we combine both those methods we just talked about. We, we take a value-based method and a policy-based method and uh, put them into a single algorithm, uh, use two uh, separate neural networks. Uh, one neural network is an actor network uh, that picks the actions. It controls how the agent behaves. This is a policy-based approach. And then we uh, implement a second neural network in the agent, and this network is the critic. And the purpose of the critic is to measure how good uh, the action that the actor recommended to be taken, um, how good that action actually is. And this is a value-based approach. So we, we take these two, put them together in one algorithm, and uh, we go overcome some of the, the, uh, the problems that we saw with them individually. The, the real main advantage of, of this approach is that uh, whereas in like the policy-based methods, we had to use a Monte Carlo uh, technique and we couldn't do learning until we completed an entire episode. With an actor critic approach, uh, we can make uh, uh, updates at each time step. We can make learning uh, activities take place every time we take a step in the environment. Uh, this is a temporal difference learning approach. And we've seen uh, how that can uh, be advantageous because it uh, reduces variance in, in learning. So uh, to make this work, uh, we train the critic model to approximate the value function. Um, the value function replaces the reward function that we saw in uh, like the reinforcement uh, algorithms policy gradient uh, that in that method only calculated rewards at the end of the episode. But here uh, we can calculate those, uh, those rewards and, and, and take those rewards into account and take a learning step uh, with every step we take in the environment. So really, that's that's the uh, the the kernel of the the entire method. So uh, in summary, we we implement two different neural networks. Uh, in reality, uh, I should mention that often you'll have more than two neural networks because uh, you'll see in the in the standard algorithm, starting with uh, the deep deterministic policy gradient algorithm that we that you'll use in the last two projects, that uh, each one of these main neural networks has a sister network that goes along with it. Um, it's a, a soft update process, and that soft update update process. Uh, uh, lets you take actions on a, uh, a a policy that doesn't change very often, and then slowly update that policy based on the learning that takes place in the more rapidly changing uh, primary neural network. So um, in any case, uh, there's two main uh, neural networks. The policy network that's, that's uh, implemented as the actor, um, and that, that controls how the agent acts. It selects the actions, and you can see it's a function of the state that you're in, the action uh, that you take and a set of, uh, of theta values that are the weights of the neural network. It's the, uh, the policy network. Then there's also a, uh, the second network, it's the critic network. Uh, and this is a value function approximator. And it measures how good those actions were that were, that were uh, recommended by the policy network. And uh, this Q function critic network, uh, sometimes it's a Q function, sometimes it's an advantage function. Uh, Q hat kind of is a generic value function here. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's uh, uh, based on a state and an action and a, uh, a set of weights. And the weights, uh, W or omega here, are the weights of that uh, critic network. So in summary, uh, today we talked about uh, two of the earlier methods that we've discussed in the course, value-based methods that uh, map each state action pair to a value. And we talked about how those work well with uh, finite action spaces, but uh, are problematic for uh, environments with continuous action spaces. And then uh, we, some, we reviewed the policy-based networks that uh, directly optimize a policy without relying on a value function. And th those uh, methods can be used uh, in continuous or stochastic uh, action spaces. But the problem that they had was that the Monte Carlo learning updates uh, require you to complete an episode before you have a step of learning. And that resulted in high variance and slow learning. So in the actor-critic methods, we combine those two uh, standalone methods, the value-based and policy-based methods, and put them into a single algorithm. Uh, the actor part of the algorithm controls how the agent behaves. That's the policy-based part of it. It picks an action based on the state that you're in. Um, and then there's a the critic uh, that measures how good that action is, and it's a value-based method. And uh, the uh, actor critic, uh, the version of the critic that's used uh, in these algorithms enables temporal difference updates, and, and that uh, gets by the uh, the high variance we saw in Monte Carlo uh, update methods with standard policy-based approaches. And uh, with that, we could reduce variance and speed up uh, learning. Uh, 
So, um, you know, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the talk uh, that these methods are important. Um, the the uh, actor critic uh, methods that we see here are, are what's used in, in every modern uh, deep reinforcement learning uh, network that I know of. There's lots of different variations of this. Uh, you'll use a deep deterministic policy gradient, DDPG, in the first project, most likely. Uh, you're, you're welcome to use any algorithm you like in those, but uh, most students uh, would, would use that. It's an actor critic method, and you'll find that uh, in that continuous action space, it works very well. Uh, H2C is similar. It's an advantage actor critic. It's another uh, version of the actor critic, but uh, rather than use a uh, Q function, it uses the, the uh, advantage function that we talked about last week. So with that, I hope that that gives you a feeling for what actor critic networks are and uh, and the basics of, of how they how they work, and uh, and that's it for this evening. Um, as always, uh, for those of you who are in the deep reinforcement learning uh, program, there's a ask me anything session immediately following tonight's lecture, and I'll be online and uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. So uh, with that, I'll see you next week. Bye.